Yeah, see if you can find one for me. Off the... Well, I can look on the product stamp. Okay. So, which one is it? How many say A? Only two are right. That's the answer. Wow, that's not good. Uh-oh. I believe so, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, why wouldn't it be A? Yeah. Um, okay, so remember the, first off, well, what is y equals square root of x? It'd be good to have the, um, right on your chart, you, well, you probably know, it just shoots off to the right like that. That's the notion. So normally it goes up to the right. All these graphs go up to the right normally, don't they? They all originally, unless they've been moved around, shifted and turned and stuff, up to the right. So this one is going up to the left, but it's not going down. It's not going down to the left. It's only been flipped sideways. It's not been flipped vertically, huh? It's only been flipped sideways. It's been turned this way. What makes a graph flip sideways? Where do you put the negative, I mean? Is that an X effect or a Y effect? Is, sideways is X, right? Is, isn't this the X axis that goes sideways? So that's an X effect that makes something flip sideways. So the negative goes where? On the X, not out here, no, 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 not out there. That would be Y out there. That would make it go down if you put it out there. Remember all that stuff? So you see how this is baloney and this is baloney? Putting those negatives in front of the root, that, those graphs would go down, down instead of up. This one goes up. That makes sense? So no way B and D. No way C, because he doesn't even have a negative on the X. You've got to have a negative on the X, because it's going left. So it's not that. So it's either A or E that quick. Now, is it really A? Let's check a point. That's what I would do to make sure, sure, sure. Uh, let's plug in, make a little XY table. Plug in X is 5. What do you get? Y equals the root of 5 minus 5 minus 2. The root is 0 minus 2. Negative 2. Over 5, down 2? Yeah, that's exactly what that point is. Over 5, down 2. That's looking good. You could do one more point if you want, and it would work, and I'll move on. Yeah? I'm just a little confused because it is over in the positive side, which is not the x, which that would mean negative 5, right? A is obviously not. Oh, good question. Really good question. That's yeah, does everybody hear the question? He's saying, look, this graph has been moved to the right. Even though it's going left, it's been, you know, they've, they've taken the dot, which is normally the origin, is moved over here to the right. And, and remember, x is opposite. So shouldn't that be a negative 5 in the parenthesis with x? Because it's opposite. And Yeah, remember the trick I told you? That's why I really suggest plugging in points. Because, yes, well, what it is is they originally moved it left, 5, and then they flipped the whole thing. So that's why it's too hard to track exactly. I gave you a couple general rules about flips and things, and then I said check some points. Because it's just too hard to memorize and perfectly follow all the little flip rules. But just know in general that if there's a negative on X, that's always a sideways flip. If there's a negative in the front of the whole thing, that's always a vertical flip. We look at this picture go, it's only a sideways flip, so it had to be either A or E, then just check points. That'd be the best way to go. Good. Good question. That makes sense. Do you remember that? So, all right. So, that's a piecewise function. It's in two separate pieces. And um, that's a little tricky, isn't it? All right. So, how do we find the equation, let's say, for um, this piece? Let's start with him. That's a y equals mx plus b, huh? It's a, it's a line, line equation. What's, can you tell what the slope of that thing? Well, what's the b first off? Zero. Remember, the b is where it hits. Even though there's an open dot there, it basically hits there at zero. Am I going too fast? Remember line equations from algebra? The b is where they hit the axis, so the b is zero. And now what's the slope? What's the rise over run? That thing. Yeah, can you tell? So remember, slope is rise over run. 
So, yeah, can you tell where that dot is? Or how about this dot? Looks like it goes up 2 over 1, 2, 3, huh? Up 2 over 3. Then it does that again, just keeps going up 2 over 3. Can you tell? Yeah. Up 2 over 3. So see all these 2 thirds? It's got to be one of those. It's either this one or this one because it has the 2 thirds x and the 2 thirds x. That one, that's good so far? Yeah, didn't forget about e. Well, right. <laughs> don't forget about e. I know. See how that always keeps you honest? Right? You can't just guess. You've got to really be able to work these problems out. All right. So, um, yeah. So we've got to be a little more careful. That's true. So, now, um, the difference between, one of the differences between A and D is it says greater than zero, and this says between zero and three. Remember, those are the conditions. Those are the locations where it does that certain whatever it does. So it's saying between x is 0 and x is what? I can't tell what's going on over here. Let's see. Um, it looks like it stops there at... Oh, it doesn't stop at 3, does it? So that's so D's crazy. Out with D. You see what I'm saying there? They're saying it's supposed to do the second piece only between, on the x-axis between 0 and 3. That's not true. This piece of graph, this second piece, this y equals 2 thirds x plus 0, or just 2 thirds x, goes beyond 3, doesn't it? This is not right. So d's out. Am I losing you? I'm, I'm getting stares that don't, don't seem to be understanding. Does that, that make sense what I'm saying? The x, the i stuff tells where it does this. Remember how piecewise work? The stuff on the right says when x is between 0 and 3, when you're on the x-axis between 0 and 3, I do that function. But when I'm on the x-axis between, you know, wherever else, I do this function. Remember how piecewise works? The x stuff to the right is telling you where it does whatever it does. Is that good? So, so it can't be D because D is saying I do the, well, this is Y out here, I do the Y equals 2 thirds X only between 0 and 3. That's not true. He does the 2 thirds x thing. This is 2 thirds x. Between 0 and onward. Right? So it's not D. We already know it's not B or C because they have 3 halves x. That, that is not going up 3 over 2. It's not 3 halves x, right? It's not going up 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2. You, there'd be a dot right there. And there's not. Tracking with me? So it's A or E. It's A or E. Right? Now, is, is, is A, the, the second part of A is correct. Two thirds X when X is to the right of zero. Right? Here's zero. When X is to the right of zero, it does the equation two thirds X. See what that's saying? When X is to the right of zero, I do, remember, F, F is Y. Function letters are Y. So that's y equals, I do 2x when x is to the right of 0. Yes, you do. You do the, I'm sorry, 2 thirds x, 2 thirds x when x is to the right of 0. Okay, but then what about the left part? Is the left part correct? Is, what is this right here? Is that a 4 thirds x plus 4? When x is between negative 3 and 0, that looks right. Negative 3 and 0 is the zone right here, isn't it? Negative 3 and 0. Is, is that the right equation? Y equals 4 thirds X plus 4? Well, the B is 4. It does, it does indeed hit up at 4 on the Y axis. That looks right. Is that slope 4 thirds? Yeah, it goes up 4 over 3, doesn't it? From here to here? Yeah, it is A. That makes sense how to read piecewise? The language of piecewise makes sense? It tells you where... With the x's, it does whatever with the y's. That's what it's doing for you on this. Okay. Oh, yeah, since I said 30 was a for sure on the test, yeah. <laughs> Might as well do it, yeah. 4x plus 5 over 7 plus 2 sevens equals minus 7. So, yeah, how do you solve, you know, if, if you're going to go into Math 5a calculus? Got to be able to, to to do those really easily. Fractions. That 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 is totally it. That's what makes people survive 
fract uh, survive calculus or not survive calculus is those algebra skills. Do you know all? Like solving things like, like this. I just subbed for an algebra, for a calculus class the other day. And um, there were only eight left. Wow. Yeah, and I, and I asked them, I said, so was this class full originally, like 30 people? They go, yep. There was eight left. So. Yeah, it's 5A. It's the next class. 5A. And I know that teacher's not outrageously hard. My daughter took that teacher. And, you know, said the teacher was very fair. And anyway, it's all about algebra. Do you know the rules of algebra? That's what calculus is all about. So do you know the rules of how do you, what do you, How do you solve when there's fractions? Common denominator. This is actually, I was just doing problems like this with my 201 class this week. And I'm not trying to put you down or anything, but I'm saying this is knowledge really that you should have grabbed out. I'm glad to help you with it and everything. Please, again, I'm not putting you out, but I want you to know that's the kind of thing you need to know for higher methods. All the algebra. It's all those things from algebra. Come see me. I'm glad to help. Common, what is the common denominator? 21. And you go 21, 21, 21. Remember that? It's definitely one of the hardest things from algebra is all these. And then we cross cancel. Remember? 7 goes into 21 three times. Remember that? Because really 21 over 1, 21 over 1, 21 over 1 is really what I'm putting there. Remember, you cross cancel and multiply. My algebra students have lots of trouble with these because they're one of the hardest things for sure. So that'll be 3 times 4x plus 5. And then here, 7 goes into 21 3. So it'll be 2 times 3. And here, 3 goes into 21 7 times be minus 7x times 7. Is that step? That's the hardest step. After this, I know you can all do it easy. I'll finish it for you now. But that's the hard step, huh? Does that make sense, that step? On that? You just have multiply through by the common denominator, 21, and then cross-cancel, cross-cancel, cross-cancel. And boom and a boom. 12x plus 15, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 49x. We good there? How do we solve for x? Yeah, get, get rid of one of them, huh? So minus 12x, or either one, whatever. Boom, 15 and 6 makes 21. This is minus 61x. And last step. Oh, this part's easy for you, I know. Minus 61, so 21 over minus 61. Oh, none of the above. There it is. But we have great confidence in our algebra skills, right? <laughs> nope. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, you start getting a little shaky. Every other question is none of the above. Something's wrong here. All right, and what do you want to see, 28 and 30? This time is going to be different with this practice final. That's my great hope. Amazing results. Right? You're all going to ace it because you got the practice final? No. No. And every year they ask me, make a practice final, Ms. Taryn. I was like, just study the old practice exam. So I finally made one. So I'm hoping for great things or I'm never making another one. You guys will determine the future. All right. So uh, I made it for all my classes this semester. So I'm anxious to see how it goes. I'm hoping for great stuff. All right, so f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Is that good? So that's the, it's called the difference quotient, which just means subtraction fraction. Difference, subtraction, quotient, fraction. It's the subtraction fraction, which is kind of a funny name. But that's all. It's, it's an important subtraction fraction in calculus. Anyway, let's just crank it. So what does this mean? Um, f of x plus h. Let's just do that separately, how about? So the f of x function, what is f of x? Well, right here. x squared plus 6x plus 7. So what's f of x plus h then? Yeah, remember, whatever's in the toaster gets put in the toaster, in the toaster, huh? Remember, the X is like the slot in the top of the toaster. You plug in there. So that would be 
x plus h squared plus 6x plus h plus 7. Does that make sense? And then I've got to work all that out. See what I did there? Whenever you put something in a function, that means you put it right where x is. That x is really just a placeholder. It just holes in the top of a toaster, right? So then what do we have? This is x plus h, x plus h, plus and then the 6 distributes, 6x plus 6h plus 7. Foil this, x squared plus xh plus xh plus h squared plus 6h plus, uh, plus 6x plus 6h plus 7. This is all just one part of it. This is the biggest part of it, though. You tracking with me? This is all still just f of x plus h. To gather like terms, xh plus xh, 2xh, pause there. Is that making sense what I did there so far? So what I did is I, I just, I'm doing this first part of the difference quotient, f of x plus h, which means plug x plus h everywhere you have x and then work it all out, which means the 2 means 2 of those and foil that all out, right? And then the other stuff. 6x plus 6h plus 7. Combine like terms, okay? So there's that. Now we're ready to put it all together. So we're supposed to do, what are we supposed to do again? f of x plus h, which is all of this. So, whoops. So that's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 6x plus 6h plus 7. So all of that is f of x plus h minus f of x, minus f of x, that's minus all of f of x, which is the original, bless you, like that, and then that's all over h. So far so good? Everybody see what I did there? So that whole f of x plus h, Minus half of x, all over h. Am I good? So, like I said, you know, calculus, if you're going to go to calculus, this needs to be, like, back of your hand. Just no problem. Because you do tons of those. Tons of them. So, foiling and like terms, if you, if you mess up frequently, calculus will be torturous. But if not, if you've got your algebra skills down, calculus is not that bad. So, so practice that. You can, I don't mean to discourage you with those words, but just to say, if not, you need to practice. Practice, practice. You'll get better and better and better. All right. Um, now, let's gather like terms, stuff like that. So what do we have there to gather? This minus sign. How about I just distribute? I don't want to do a rewrite the whole thing. How about I just distribute this minus sign through the parentheses right now instead of rewriting everything? It'd be minus x squared minus 6x six, six, minus 7. that okay? Because it's minus the whole f of x. It distributes all the way through. Is that okay? Remember, I gave you something to help you remember, but I know I said a million things. All the non-h stuff should cancel out. When you do the difference quotient, all non-h cancels. Everything that doesn't have an h in it will cancel. x squared doesn't have an h, right? See that? See how it drops out? Uh, 6x, he doesn't have an h. Sure enough, look at him drop out. 7, doesn't have an H. Sure enough. Oops, can't say anything now, huh? He just dropped out. That, and that's a good way to double check that you didn't make some small algebra mistake, a sign mistake or something. Because all the items that don't have an H will always drop out whenever you're doing the difference quotient in particular. Okay, so what are we left with now? 2XH plus H squared plus 6H all over h, we're almost there. Now that h divides all three, doesn't it? So in other words, it just it cancels this one, makes this first power, cancels that one, huh? So 2x plus h plus 6. Is the worst 
<laughs> Look at that. Torturous. 2x plus h plus 6. <laughs> you know, you got to be sort of a little bit of a sadist to be a math teacher, right? Just enjoying the torture of others. No. Does that make sense, all that algebra mess? Now you're taking five minutes to go back to make sure you didn't make a mistake because you did it right. Yeah, don't do that. There's no time for that. you got to move on. Yeah. All right, so number 30. Y'all want to see number... No, that was 30. 28? <laughs> yeah. All right, so... Um, yeah, so basically they want me to come up with some kind of... Oh, we got to do the whole thing. Ooh, we got four minutes. All right. So basically express the volume. So how do you, what's the volume? So they're going to, we're going to fold it up into this 3D box. Volume of a 3D box? Length times width times height. Good. So what, let's call this length or width or whatever. Length and width and this will be height. So what is the length? Yeah, do you all see that? Because, right, all the way across is 25. Back up X, back up X from here. Whoops. You know, once you fold up those sides, then from here to here will be 25 minus 2X. Everybody see that? Right, once you fold up those corners, once those corners fold up, you'll lose this X and you'll lose that X when it folds up into a box. So the new width, when you fold it into a box, will be 25 minus 2x. Same way, the new, whatever you call it, length or whatever, from there to there, will be 13 minus 2x, won't it? Because it's the outer to outer minus the two edges. Right? So therefore, the volume is length is 25 minus 2x. Width is 13 minus 2x. And what's the height? So there's length. There's width, and what's the height? How tall is that box? X. Everybody see it? The height is just X, because you're going to fold up that X. That'll be this X, when folded up, becomes height, doesn't it? This is X. So the height is just X. From there to there. That was laying flat. They folded up as X. Can you picture that? Yeah. Yeah. So you don't even need to multiply that or anything. Yeah. Good point, Rudy. Just put that in your graphing calculator as y1. Just put that in, 25 minus 2x, 13 minus 2x, x. And you want to, what are we trying to do, maximize or minimize what they say? Maximum. Maximize. So put that into y1. I'll do it right now. Put that into y1. See if you can do that. 13. Are you good with the calculator? 13 minus 2x and x. And then graph the thing. And like usual, I'm getting nothing on my screen. <laughs> so you know the trick is always to adjust your window. Well, look at the answers. They're all round two. That's helpful to have the answers there. They're all wrong, though, but no. But maybe they're, they're, maybe they're close. So I'm thinking I should do an X around two. So I'm going to go back to my window. My X right now is going from negative four to four. So I'll go zero to five on my X. And I'll hit the button again, graph. I'm still getting nothing. So now, what do you do when you get nothing on your screen? Where should you look? Table. Hit second table. Did you all catch that during the semester? Second table. Whoa, my values are big. That, that tells the story. So let me see. Let me get down. So I'm getting values that are two, three, four hundred. So then I'm going to go back to my window and make my Y max go to like, yeah, 500 or something. So I made my, there we go, I got a beautiful graph. I did 500. So I made, my, I made my window go like 0 to 5 and 0 to 500 for the Y max. Because when I did second table, I saw values way up high. And then I got this beautiful picture. Find the maximum second uh, calc max. Uh, go left of the max. Go right of the max. And guess, just hit enter. I got 2.7, I got 2.72, yeah, it is C, 2.72.
is the maximum on that one. Good. We got that in less than five minutes. 2.72. Hey, let me say this honest word. There's some graphing calculator stuff, but there's not a lot. I mean, again, I'm mainly thinking about my job is to get you ready to go for calculus. Calculus doesn't use the graphing calculator. So there's one or two. I mean, I cut it out completely. But I'm mainly putting other stuff. Not, not like, probably, this one might not be. Or if it is there, I might stop at this formula. And just say, okay, which one's the right formula? There's not a lot of find the max, find the min. Oh, yeah. There's not a lot of graphing calculators. Mainly, there's other things. The main thing is you need for calculus on that. How about the majors? Um, yeah, so probably not a lot of matrices, because that's a lot of calculator. Um, is that what you like? <laughs> All right, y'all.